Nursing. Today we're going to be talking about how to understand EKG rhythms. Now if this is the area that you struggle with, we're going to really help you to understand the basics of EKGs. Now what I have for you in front of me today is just kind of like a little diagram to help outline the basics to understanding EKGs. Now there's three main things that you need to know um, when it comes to EKGs. Number one is the heart anatomy, right? So understanding what's the actual anatomy of the heart. Number two is the electric, electrical conduction system. And I'll get into a little bit uh, what that is exactly. And then number three is to know the actual rhythm, right? To understand how the rhythm, um, what each of the parts of the rhythm means, and then how to respond to it. So now, a lot of times when people... Uh, are learning the anatomy of the heart, they're only aware of the anatomy of the heart from a blood flow perspective, right? So meaning that, you know, you know about the atrium, you know about the ventricles and then the valves, um, but you're not aware of it from the perspective of the electrical conduction system in order to understand the rhythm. So, so let's talk a little bit about heart anatomy really briefly. So when it comes to the heart, when it comes to the anatomy of the heart, you yes, you need to know you know the right and left atrium, but then also you need to be aware of the SA node, right, and the AV node, and then the Purkinje fibers, uh, as well as also the bundle of His. So let me first describe what each of those things are that I just briefly mentioned. Um, they're not easily seen through the naked eye, right? They're very microscopic but they're, they are there on the heart. And the SA node is located on top of the um, atrium, and the AV node is located on top of the ventricles, uh, and then the bundle of His is pretty much that space in between the left and the right ventricle. And then the Purkinje fibers, you can't really see in this photo, but the Purkinje fibers are pretty much fibers that goes out throughout the, the ventricles. So let's talk about it now from the perspective of um, the actual electric conduction system. So typically what happens is that first, um, the heart le releases an impulse uh, from the SA node, all right, from the SA node. And that impulse is what we call, uh, sorry, that impulse is the P wave. Okay, so what? So, so a normal heart will release an impulse from the SA node to the AV node. The, the, the time in between the SA node to the AV node is actually the PR interval, but the actual firing of the impulse is the P wave. So what, so what you're really looking at, when you're looking at a rhythm like this, you're really looking at the movement of that impulse throughout the heart, okay? That's what you're really looking at. You're looking at the movement of the impulse traveling throughout the heart. That's why it's so important to know the anatomy of the heart. So typically, to explain it in you know really simple terms, which is the electric conduction system, the SA node will fire on its own. So the SA node is like our natural pacemaker, right? So people who don't have who have problems with their the you know the pulse releasing on its own the way it's supposed to, that's why they need a pacemaker. Okay, so the SA node will release an impulse which is located on top of the heart, on top of the atrium, and that impulse is the P wave. That impulse will then travel down to the AV node. Okay, travel down to the AV node, and the atrium will contract. All right, that's the PR interval. I don't have it on here, but you do need to memorize how many uh, seconds, or actually, actually, it's less than a second, uh, how long it lasts for each interval on the rhythm, okay? So it will fire, right? The atrium will fire, which is also called atrial depolarization, all right? Atrial depolarization. Then, now, it will go, the impulse will, now the impulse will leave from the AV node, Okay, so from the AV node, right, now the impulse will fire from the AV node and it will travel down the ventricles. 
Once it's traveling down the ventricles, the ventricles will now contract. And the movement of the impulse from the AV node throughout the ventricles is your QRS complex. All right, that's your QRS complex. This is the reason why um, if you have a patient who heart, whose heart is enlarged, uh, then it's then the then the QRS complex is going to be wider, right? Because the heart is is enlarged, so it takes more time for it to travel, um, for the impulse to travel through the heart, right? Like for example, a bundle branch block, uh, patients have a history of some type of um, cardiomyopathy, right? So you're going to anticipate that they're probably going to have something maybe uh, um, strange with their QRS complex. And then if they have a history of like ischemia, that's when we'll see here between the STE segment um, because there's some type of damage of the tissues of the muscles of the heart. Well, anyways, though, like I said, you have the AV node that goes from the, the impulse goes from the AV node to the ventricles. And then the ventricles will contract, which is the QRS complex. Then now that, that impulse will travel throughout the bundle of his right, throughout the Purkinje fibers, and pretty much what's happening is that the heart is relaxing and getting ready to refill again, right, which is the T wave, all right? So that time where the ventricles is relaxing, getting ready to refill again, that's called ventricular repolarization, which represents the T wave, okay? So, so, th so this is kind of like really the simplest version. It, when you begin to, to perceive or understand that the impulse is merely, the, uh, sorry, the rhythm is merely the impulse traveling throughout the heart, it makes a lot more uh, sense to you, all right? It's a lot more um, clear, okay? Then, now once you get this part down, then, it, then you'll begin to better understand you know, for example, uh, atrial rhythms, right? Like, and because now what we're seeing here, that's why the P wave is abnormal, right? For patients, for example, if they have atrial fibrillation or atrial flutter, flutter, we're looking at the P wave because that's where the impulse is supposed to be firing from, is in the atrium, right? So when you begin to match the movement of the impulse with the location of the heart, it will make a whole lot more sense to you, all right? So I hope that you found what I said today helpful. I hope it gave you some better understanding with the basics of covering EKGs. If you need more help, then I wanna encourage you to get started today. You can sign up for our EKGs course. It's called Understanding EKGs. Um, in the videos, I go over EKGs in a lot of depth. And we also cover as well um, atrial rhythms, ventricular rhythms, junctional rhythms, what's PAC, what's PVC, what's PJC. Um, and then also what are the appropriate interventions based on them having these abnormal rhythms. So it will significantly help you to fully understand EKGs even if you struggle to understand it until this far. We've had phenomenal testimonials of people who went through the course and was really blown away by how much it helped them to better understand interpreting EKGs easily, right? To learn more about it, visit our website or click below this video for more information. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure that you hit that like, subscribe, follow us.